We're joined by Nikima now. Uh, can you bring us up to speed with what happened earlier today? There was a protest out in Stillwater. Yes, hundreds of us went to Stillwater, Minnesota, to the home of Pete Orpit, who is the Washington County attorney. And a lot of folks have asked, well, why is the Washington County attorney involved in the case surrounding Dante Wright and the uh, killer cop who took his life? Well, the reason has to do with Mike Freeman, who is the Hennepin County attorney, being a punk ass, being afraid of people, not wanting to accept responsibility and protecting killer cops. We've gone to his home multiple times. We've called him out. We've asked him to resign. Rather than him stepping down, he moved to a new location. And then he passed the buck to the Washington County attorney to make charging decisions in this case. Now, the Washington County attorney, Pete Orpit, has a history of working with the police, not only as a prosecutor, but being an attorney on behalf of the Minnesota Peace Officers Association. And through that situation, we know that he has a huge conflict of interest. We know that he doesn't know the first thing about racial justice. He has undercharged the case of Kim Potter by only charging her with second degree manslaughter when there should be murder charges in this case. So we brought the battle to his house. And what was interesting about that experience was number one, hundreds of people traveled from the Twin Cities to Stillwater, which he was not expecting. The other thing that happened was as we marched down the street, Pete Orpit's neighbors put up the fist in solidarity with protesters. Some of them got out there in the streets with us. Some of them were singing chants and declaring that black lives matter. And they also agreed that they would hold Pete Orpit accountable after we left. Now in the midst of all of that, Pete Orpit came out of his house during a period of time in which we went on a march from in front of his house. We were around the corner but one of our uh, allies, comrades, fellow organizers, Jelani Hussein of CARE Minnesota, stayed behind for a phone call. He happened to see Pete Orpid come out of his house and began apologizing to his neighbors. And so Jelani was thinking, well, why isn't he apologizing to me? As a black man who is being subjected to oppression through the criminal justice system, so Jelani confronted him and asked him why he wasn't apologizing to him. And they began a dialogue about the undercharging of Kim Potter, a killer cop in this situation. As they were having a conversation, the rest of us, hundreds of us, showed up again in front of Pete Orpit's house. And then we had a conversation about the situation. So I came over, engaged in conversation with Pete Orpit. He tried to defend himself and say, I've talked to other civil rights attorneys. I've done this, I've done that. I just, I can't find a way to charge beyond manslaughter. And we said, well, how did they find a way to charge Mohammed Noor, a black Muslim Somali officer who became a scapegoat in the state of Minnesota when he accidentally, although wrongfully, shot and killed Justin Rusechek Damon, an affluent white woman. Somehow they were able to manipulate the third degree murder statute and charge Mohammed Noor and convict him, making him the first officer in the state of Minnesota to be convicted for killing a civilian. How does that happen? When over 400 people have been killed in Minnesota since the year 2000, according to Communities United Against Police Brutality, and most of those cops who have killed people have been white men, yet not a single one has been held accountable under the law. So we know that white supremacy is at heart. We know that a black cop has been scapegoated. And now that a white cop who was involved in racially profiling a young black man because he had an air freshener yep. hanging on his mirror, 26 years of experience, claiming she accidentally used a gun instead of a taser. How does she walk away with manslaughter charges? Absolutely absurd. We are not accepting that. We believe that murder charges are appropriate, second degree, third degree, and manslaughter. So we brought the battle to his house to let him know that we're expecting him to charge this case appropriately. Mm -hmm. Additionally, as someone just mentioned, Kim Potter was involved in trying to cover, cover up the murder of Kobe Heisler. Right. Mm -hmm. Kobe Heisler was a young African-American man who lived in Brooklyn Center. He had autism and had mental health issues. His grandparents called 911 one day when he was threatening to harm himself, yeah. not other people. And then they canceled the 911 call. 
but the Brooklyn Center Police showed up anyway, okay. and they wound up killing Kobe Heisler. And Kim Potter, as the person in command in the situation, told the officers, leave in separate cars, turn off your body cameras, and don't talk to anyone. Mm effectively helping to cover up the murder of Kobe Heisler right. because those officers have never been held accountable and they are probably still Brooklyn Center. They are still they Brooklyn Center them. police officers because we saw them out after Dante Wright was killed. So we know that this system is not holding killer cops accountable. Pete Orpit plays a role in that, not only by helping to protect and defend cops that he works with, but also by undercharging Kim Potter in this situation. So he knows we're serious, Black Lives Matter, right. and that we will be at his house again until he brings appropriate murder charges against right. Kim Potter for the killing of Dante Wright. That's right. Well, thank you for all that. Um, you brought up white supremacy and a lot of people have equated uh, Operation Safety Net as a, a figure arm, a, a weapon of white supremacy. What is your interpretation of that? My interpretation of, of, of Operation Safety Net is that uh, Governor Tim Walz is drunk off power, that he is engaging, engaging in fascism, and that he is effectively putting his white knee on the necks of yes. black people, protesters, and other people of color in the state of Minnesota through this high-powered, heavily funded military operation known as Operation Safety Net. Operation Safety Net has been responsible for a multi-jurisdictional task force complete with officers from around the Twin Cities and some have said even in, from neighboring states. And they have come in like an occupying force. They have shot people with rubber bullets. They've injured people with rubber bullets. They have shot projectiles, flashbang grenades. They have sprayed us with tear gas. They have cursed at people and they do not belong here. For some reason, instead of seeing the problem with op Operation Safety Net, Governor Tim Waltz is looking through the lens of white supremacy and prevailing then and claiming that the use of munitions and tear gas has been judicious. So what I said the other day when a member of the press told me that was, Tim Waltz needs to bring his ass to the Brooklyn Center Police That's Department right. and experience right. the tear gas, right. experience the rubber bullets, right. experience the flashbang grenades. Yep. We know that he would run as soon as he got there. That's right. Mm -hmm. So Operation Safety Net needs to end. Uh, Governor Waltz needs to step down. Uh, John Harrington, who is the Commissioner of Public Safety, needs to step down. Yep. We've already run him out of the St. Paul Police Department. Right. We ran him out of Metro Transit. And now he is the commissioner of public safety, even though he is incompetent, he's unqualified, and he is rubber stamping white supremacy through his actions, even though he is a black man. He cannot hide behind the color of his skin. He is not one of us. He is not for us. And it's time for him to go. Thank you for that. Um, and when it comes to even uh, the culpability, who, who, with this unified command of safety net, who is responsible for these actions against the press, against the protesters, uh, against the community in Brooklyn Park or Brooklyn Center? It seems like they're escaping culpability. It, what is your viewpoint on that? I would say that the person who is most culpable is Governor Tim Waltz. That's right. He sanctioned Operation Safety Net. He's taken pride in Operation Safety Net and he has ignored the concerns of civilians and he's ignored the concerns of journalists as well mm -hmm. who have been injured as a result of the brutalization of those officers who again are drunk off of power. They are, they are getting a kick out of being able to play with their toys and fire munitions mm -hmm. at innocent people, at unarmed people, at people who are standing up for Dante Wright and other victims of police violence. Other people who are culpable are John Harrington, Commissioner of Public Safety, Another man whose name I don't know, who's the head of the state troopers. Langer. 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 Is all, I've seen him at one of their Saturday Night Live skits, also known as a press conference that they give at midnight every night to the press, mm -hmm. full of propaganda, manipulating information and evidence, and pretending that they're under threat. They've shown rocks and bottles. And these people are coming to the table with high-powered military weapons, tanks, sound machines, yep. chemical weapons and munitions. Yep. And they're trying to tell the public, come help us. They're signaling people like Kyle Rittenhouse to come and help them. Right. 
members of KKK and white supremacist groups to come and help them. And these individuals have come to protest in the past. As a matter of fact, when Jamar Clark was killed in 2015, several men connected to a white supremacist group showed up and they shot five protesters. When Philando was killed at the mansion, we caught white armed men present in the protest trying to pretend that they belong. We sniffed them out. We made them leave. So this is a pattern. As a matter of fact, after Jamar was killed, we saw someone who had a white, a young white man who had a Molotov cocktail mm -hmm. get into the car, an unmarked car of a state trooper. That's right. That's right. So there is a pattern here of white supremacists getting involved in trying to protect the police when we are calling them out for their misconduct, their violence, and their abuse. And now is no different. So to have them at a press conference last night saying, come help us, that is an invitation yeah. to harm black bodies, brown bodies, mm -hmm. native bodies, Asian bodies, and anyone who empathizes with our cause. It's unacceptable. Uh, I was just watching the video. I know there's a young lady. I think it was her. I think she was talking about P. Orput. Was that you was talking about P. Orput? Yeah, Nikima. It was somebody else talking about P. Orput. And I used to live out in Washington County. And as soon as I found out that they moving the case from Hennepin to Washington County, there ain't going to be no justice for Dante. I'm going to let y'all know that right now. Because I know how Washington County people are, especially if they bring this to the uh, juries and, to, and they have, you know, like I'm saying, they have like, the people decide on all that stuff. That county is so Republican and so right-wing. And they're like, you know, the people that are online that are saying, oh, oh, he should have never um, resisted or whatever. Like all that fucking bullshit they talking about. That's what's going to happen because, like I said, at the end of the day, look at the, look at the statistics. Most people in Washington County, they aim towards that that right wing type of mindset. So I already know I'm like, man, if it's not gonna be in Hennepin County, I already look I looked in I really did look into it. I used to live in Washington County. I know people being prosecuted. They have a favoritism towards white people. I'm just telling y'all that right now. I seen it happen with my friends. I've I had two friends, a black one and a white one. One of them got caught up, the white boy, he got caught with drugs, all this shit, guns, all this stuff, right? One of my homies just got caught up with only just a gun. But guess what? The white boy got caught up with got got off with the got off on the hook. Only like what six, seven months probation and he was off within a year. My homie's still on his second year of probation right now. Yep. So I'm like, yo, Washington County, I just know it's just gonna be on bullshit. May and I think it's very wrong. I don't think that you should have moved it to Washington County. I think it should have been a Hennepin County thing. All that whether what they say, they say because of like interest, point of interest, conflict of interest, they're not trying to have in the same thing. That pissed me the fuck off. Cause I know Washington County's on bullshit and they're not finna prosecute shit. Word. Period. Word. Um, what do you hope the prosecution comes up with? Did you, are you okay with second degree manslaughter? No, that's not shit. Because like I said, look at my, I'm, look, look at that. I'm gonna I'm go, I'm gonna cover my name though. But y'all see this shit? I'm a Somali boy. So what happened with Muhammad Noor is so fucked up. I'm thinking, okay, he killed a white girl who, who, who pull up? He pull, she like what happened? It was in the alley, and she came out of nowhere. She's trying to scare the motherfucker. He gets shot. Boom! It's murder. Oh, the white girl gonna say, "Oh, taser, taser, taser." I seen this video on Facebook. This cop explaining the weight difference, and I found out that your taser is supposed to go on your on your uh, non-dominant hand. Yep, exactly. Or on your dominant. I can't remember which one it was. Non-dominant. Non-dominant. Yup, yup, yup. Reach around. Yeah. So I'm like, that's some bullshit, bro. And I just know like. This is crazy. This happened on the same street I live. I live in Brooklyn Park right now. So like that happened in the border between Brooklyn Park and Brooklyn Center. I live on the by the shell over there. So I'm like, man, this is so sad. And I don't think the manslaughter thing is okay. I think I think murder. I think murder. I think murder. 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 That's what it is. Because I'm, I'm telling you, if it was a little white girl, a little white boy, blonde hair, blue eyes, mm -hmm. I'm telling y'all that would have been shot. He would have got or she would have got tased. That's a fact. That's a fact.